Let's talk about China. Specifically, they're the largest car market in the world and the largest market for electric vehicles. Their domestic Chinese manufacturers are evolving quickly and they're taking risks along the way. They're already entering the European market. Could North America be next? In this series of videos, I want to talk about some of the big names to look out for. And in this video, we're going to focus on BYD, which stands for build your dreams. I should say build your dreams like a like I'll do a rainbow effect. Let's see if I can let's see if I can do that with a video production software. Let's talk about the Chinese auto market. In the 2000s, Western automakers rushed into China, hoping to capitalize on the opportunity to get their huge population on wheels. At that time, some warned that Chinese manufacturers would copy the designs of much more experienced automakers, they would learn their secrets, eventually catch up and surpass established automakers like Volkswagen, General Motors, and Toyota. During this time frame, I was one of those Westerners flying out to China every quarter to help our Chinese joint venture succeed. And for many OEMs, it worked great. Chinese buyers in the 2000s looked towards established Western brands assembled in China with their joint venture partner. Toyota relied on its reputation for quality. VW had its reputation for German engineering. And China assumed that all Americans still drove a Buick. You may know the backstory. Buick had some history in Chinese market before communism and had a favorable brand reputation, which allowed it to reestablish itself there in China and survive GM's bankruptcy cutbacks. Around this time, the Chinese government sought to stimulate development and production of new energy vehicles, NEVs, battery electric vehicles, full electrics, and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles that have a gas engine, but you can plug them in too. So while Elon Musk was selling roadsters and dreaming of the Model S, China implemented a strategy in 2009 to offer generous subsidies on NEVs. It took a few years for manufacturers and consumers to catch up. The original subsidies were extended from their planned 2015 expiration, and that's when things took off. In 2015, China shot past the U.S. and became the number one market for BEVs and PHEVs, if you believe the numbers. You see, China may be a conformist society, but that doesn't mean they don't participate in some shenanigans. I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next guy that says shenanigans. <clears throat> hey, Farva, what's the name of that restaurant you like with all the goofy shit on the walls and the mozzarella sticks? You mean shenanigans? No. Oh. Some vehicles were not sold to customers, but rather sold back to the company that made them. Some NEVs only existed on paper to collect the subsidy. You may know that some car manufacturers in China are state-owned, so they figured out ways to game the system with the help of their government partnerships. Despite all this, the market for new energy vehicles in China did grow. Chinese consumers were also at the same time starting to change their opinions. Previously, they had gravitated towards established Western brands working with JVs locally to produce vehicles. Now they were willing to accept more of their domestic manufacturers as they were providing vehicles with newer technologies and more expressive designs. Chinese vehicles in the 2010s were notorious for making knockoffs of foreign vehicles. Now they started to develop their own design trends. And paired with their advanced electrical powertrains, Chinese consumers craved other new technologies in their vehicles. Western brands operating with JVs in China got caught flat-footed. They weren't taking enough risks in terms of technology and styling. Personally, I think BMW is a good case study. China is their largest market. It accounts for roughly a third of their global sales. They produce vehicles locally through a JV with Brilliance Automotive, and they import the rest into China. I can only assume that you've noticed that BMW has been taking some styling risks in recent years. To me, it's clear that their new designs are meant to appeal to young buyers in China. Bold styling, big displays, BMW has decided it can't rely on the ultimate driving machine tagline anymore. It needs to be a risk taker, even if sometimes they fail. Before we talk about BYD, let's talk about US politics. Ah! Oh, I know, I know. This will be short, trust me. 
In 2019, President Trump increased tariffs on Chinese-made vehicles, going from a low 2.5% to 27.5%. At the time, it was billed as a quick trade war, a means of speeding up negotiation with the Chinese government. But they were never negotiated away. In come President Biden. Some speculated that the new administration would go easy on China, but that has not happened. In fact, they have been very active in promoting domestic EV and battery production with the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act and the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. There is nobody on the right or the left eager to take down the high tariffs on Chinese-made electric vehicles. You may think that politicians in Washington are a bunch of idiots. I'm not going to argue against that. But they know that on the other side of that huge tariff wall are some giants of electric vehicle manufacturing. Let's talk about one of them, BYD. BYD is a Chinese conglomerate, not quite 20 years old. Listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, it includes Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, as one of its investors. BYD is a leading manufacturer of batteries, tied for second place with LG, far behind CATL, another Chinese company. Their batteries go into electric buses that it makes themselves, electric trucks that it makes, electric fork trucks, yep, they make them too, and battery energy storage for stationary use in the electrical grid. If you're interested in electric trucks, including medium and heavy duty, I did a four-part overview of that market. Check out the link. They also make cars. Let's focus on them. I mentioned that new energy vehicles includes both BEVs and PHEVs. BYD sells a lot of plug-in hybrids, but it's their battery electric vehicles that should have other automakers worried. And that's what I'm going to focus on. I won't go through their entire lineup, just focus on the ones that are most likely to be exported to the U.S. And in Europe, some of these BYDs are already available. BYD is the main brand. With its lineup divided into sub-brands, each series bringing a different style and image. For example, their Ocean series is designed with unique marine aesthetics, which, which sounds crazy saying out loud, but they, they don't look like a fish mobile or anything weird like that. You can just say it's their mainstream offering, like Chevrolet is for General Motors. Their Dynasty series, as in the Chinese dynasties, is more formal, like... You could say it's more like Buick. The BYD Atto 3, sold in China as the Wan Plus, it's also now available in Europe, so I'll compare it to the ID4, which is available in both Europe and China too. Overall, the Atto 3 is a little smaller than the ID4. In Europe, it currently only comes as a single motor front wheel drive model, so I'll compare it to the single motor rear wheel drive Volkswagen ID4. Power is a little better than the standard ID4. Standard batteries are comparable, but BYD is kind of famous for their blade battery design. You can see why they call it that from the pictures. They use a lithium iron phosphate chemistry, or LFP, making them cheaper than the nickel manganese cobalt, or NMC chemistry, used in other Western automakers. NMC batteries are more energy dense, so lighter weight for a given electrical capacity, but the nickel and cobalt make them expensive, and those minerals have concerns over their supply chain as well. Western companies are warming up to the cheaper LFP battery chemistry. Mercedes has a plant where they make LFP batteries with CATL. Those are going into the e-sprinter van. Ford recently announced a new battery plant in the United States, also with CATL, to make LFP batteries for the F-150 Lightning and the Mach-E. Range on the European WLTP test has the BYD competitive, unless you splurge for the much larger optional Volkswagen battery. Given the premium chemistry, this will cost you a lot more too. For comparison, we know the EPA range for the optional battery in the ID4. There is no exact conversion from WLTP test cycle to EPA test cycle, but I typically divide by 1.15. It gives a good estimate of the number. You can see that the BYD Atto 3 would not fare well in the U.S. in its current configuration. U.S. buyers are being trained to love big range numbers, and we do drive longer distances than in Europe or China, 
but it's being a little overblown. Also, you should consider that NMC batteries, like you see in the Volkswagen, should only be charged to about 80% on a daily basis. So leaving for work every day, you don't have that full range available to you. LFP batteries, the cheaper alternative on the other hand, don't tell you to limit the charging. The owner's manuals that I've seen have no such limitation, so you just charge it all the way to 100% on a daily basis. Automakers just cannot agree on a common way to advertise their charging capabilities, but the two cars are in the same ballpark. Now that the ID4 has launched its upgraded faster charging capability through a software update, pricing that I found online puts the BYD Addo just a little under the ID4 in Germany, but that may not take into account all the features and the value added tax. Europe imposes a 10% tariff on vehicles imported from China, not enough to make them uncompetitive in that market. The BYD also has the Han, it's a battery electric sedan sold in Europe now. Let's compare it to the all new VW ID7, which will go into production in China and Germany. The new ID7 has the biggest battery, so it gets the biggest range numbers on the European WLTP. Diving into their Ocean series, we have the Dolphin, which is about the same size as the Chevrolet Bolt. They also recently revealed a smaller Seagull and the SpongeBob. No, I'm, I'm just kidding about the SpongeBob, but in the China market, they have some cartoonish city cars. This class of vehicle is limited to 62 miles per hour, and the battery is small to keep them cheap. They're also tax less and targeted at younger buyers with models like the QQ Ice Cream, the Hongwang Mini EV, which is offered in a Game Boy edition, as well as the Macron. Back to the Dolphin. Compared to the Bolt, which is an older design that will end production in late 2023, and the VW ID3, which is a new car off of VW's MEB platform, BYD offers as much power with the optional motor and as much range with the optional battery. It charges quicker than the older Bolt, but not quite as fast as the new ID4. In China, the BYD Dolphin starts at under 117,000 RMB. That's about 25% less than the VW ID3. However, for the European market, they're required to meet regulations, so some changes are made to the design. It needed the optional motor and larger battery to be competitive in that market. Add the 10% tariff to that, and BYD announced a starting price of about 30,000 euro. That's still 25% less than the VW ID3 in Europe. Now, whether or not they make money on it, that's unknown, but they are still entering the market trying to undercut the competition given their huge vertical integration. They recently revealed the BYD Seagull, which is smaller and comes in at even a lower price in China. Wow, under $12,000 you're saying. Don't get too excited because as I've shown you before, when you import a vehicle into another market, you have to adjust the content to be right for that market. The larger motor, larger battery to be competitive, logistics and tariffs, it, it gets more expensive. So it would be much more than $12,000 in the US but unknown what the price could be. Another big disappointment are the batteries. The Seagull has been rumored to offer sodium ion batteries. So that's a new chemistry that would be even less expensive than LFP batteries. However, we will have to wait a little bit longer. For now, the car will use and launch with LFP batteries. Expect sodium ion batteries to make production in China sometime in the near future either from BYD or from CATL, the other huge battery maker in China. Other series that BYD offers includes the Song, which from the L concept appears to be a sportier sub-brand like Pontiac was for GM. It, I mean, you still remember Pontiac, right? There's also the Yang Wang. I'm, I'm sorry, I just got to stop there. I, I know I'm totally butchering that name. My apologies. Let's go back to the pictures. The Yang Wang U8 is an expressive, premium, fairly large SUV. I'd say it's for BYD what Cadillac is for GM, but it's really more than that. With a starting price of over $150,000,
the first premium edition and off-road editions of the U8, they're aiming higher than Cadillac. From the side, you can see some inspiration from the Land Rover Defender, but the grille, that's all China. And the interior is anything but utilitarian. It's super premium and squishy on the inside. It's an all-electric quad-motor SUV with 1,100 horsepower. It can perform tank turn maneuvers like Rivian said they were going to do. Apparently, there are zero lawyers in China, so you can say and do whatever you want because BYD says their U8 can float on water. Take a look for yourself. It, it looks like it's floating on water. I'm not saying that's a good idea, but it's an example of how fast and furious the Chinese EV market is evolving. One area where BYD is a little more cautious than its competitors is the area of autonomy. An executive from BYD was recently quoted as saying that fully autonomous self-driving car was basically an impossible dream right now. As you know, Elon Musk disagrees with this. And in other videos, you will see that Chinese automakers are more bullish on autonomy, at least mid-level versions of autonomy. In addition to the U8, there's the Yangwang U9, which looks to be for BYD what Corvette is for GM. It's an all-electric sports car, no exhaust in the rear. It has quad motors, and while we don't have the exact details of the specs, it's said to have a 1,000 horsepower. And I was going to say, who cares about the range? But rumors are it has over 300 miles of range, which for a sports car seems overkill. Are you really going to go on long road trips with this vehicle? Personally, I think it'd be smarter to save a few pounds and put a smaller battery in it, but that big battery may be needed to power the DSUS Intelligent Body Control System. While BYD may be a little cautious with autonomy, they are trying to do some crazy stuff with their suspension technology. DSUS P is the off-road body control system in the U8 SUV. DSUS X is the performance control system in the U9 that apparently can dance its way on stage and perform a standing jump as well. There are some other tricks it can do. We can only presume that it also helps on the racetrack. There's the new Denza series with the D9 Luxury MPV or minivan. They're quite popular in China. It also comes as an EV, an all-electric EV, or a plug-in hybrid. The N7 is a sporty luxury all-electric SUV. It features the DSUS A version of their body control system, able to soak up bumps with ease. Price in China starts at about $60,000. You want more ocean sound effects? Here's the BYD Seal. Another member of the Ocean series will be exported as the BYD Atto 4. It's BYD's answer to the Tesla Model 3. Looks special on the outside and on the inside. I know these are just pictures, but it looks more special than the Model 3. It's worth mentioning that EV subsidies from the national Chinese government have run their course and ended. This led to a series of price reduction from competitors like Tesla and BYD, to make up for the affordability. Additionally, some regional governments have kicked in their own incentives to help make up the difference. Overall, car sales in China have cooled off from their post-pandemic surge. New energy vehicles continue to see increasing sales and popularity, while internal combustion engine vehicles fall flat when it comes to sales. So if you're a Chinese electric vehicle manufacturer, you're not happy with the price war that Tesla started. But what can you do about it? You could always export more vehicles overseas. That's the inevitable next step for BYD and other EV manufacturers in China. They're already moving into Europe. They've explored other markets in Asia. And the biggest barrier to entry to the U.S. is that 27.5% tariff from the Trump administration. Plus, as a Chinese-made vehicle, they would not qualify for the $7,500 tax credit signed into law by the Biden administration. Go back 10 years and there were plenty of people arguing for free trade. They figured that if China makes the best electric vehicles in the world, that US consumers should have access to them for competition. Nowadays, our minds have changed a little bit. There's much more protectionism and incentives to encourage domestic manufacturing of electric vehicles and batteries. If BYD wants to enter the North American market, they're probably gonna have to build an assembly plant here it wouldn't surprise me if you hear about that in the upcoming months. 
In Europe, it's a little bit different. They're kind of in between. The tariffs are comparatively lower, and they're currently in negotiations for a similar incentive package to encourage domestic manufacturing. We'll see how that evolves in the months to come as well. If you learned something about BYD and the Chinese auto market and like this video, go ahead and hit that button and consider subscribing as I roll out other videos similar to this one on the other giants of Chinese EV manufacturing. Thank you for watching.